But anyway, what I want to do is I'd uh, love to introduce um, our expert, Jay Berkowitz. He is the uh, founder and CEO of 10goldenrules.com, which is a strategic online marketing consulting business. He is also the founder of domain monetization company called revenueevolution.com and the founder of a networking site called internetmarketingclub.com. So Jay will provide you with an arsenal of ideas and the top 10 steps for building a winning website. So without further ado, I introduce Jay. Thanks, Peter. Well, good morning, and thank you guys for being here early in the morning. Uh, presentation is called Building Winning Websites, and uh, let's just get right into it. So our objectives today are to talk about basic ways to build a website and some more advanced strategies. And I assume that a lot of you in the room are parking. And the, the presentation is, you know, there's a lot of tips and tricks and tools for everybody in the room. But assuming that you've been parking and you want to start doing some website build-outs, or assuming that you've got that project, and we all do, that domain name you purchase, and you've been meaning to build this thing out, I'm going to give you three strategies to build out your website. And then, of course, once you have your website, you need that all-important traffic. You need visitors to the website. So in the second section, we're going to talk about how to drive traffic to the website. And uh, far too many people you know, sort of stop there. They're like, hey, we got all this traffic, we've got all these hits, you know, and a hit is not even really a, a unique visitor. Um, and so th they don't realize that really to succeed on the internet, you, you have to go much further. You have to create a virtual relationship. You have to create that virtual handshake. So in the third section, we'll talk about building that relationship. And then in the fourth section, we'll give you some quick ideas on how to monetize a website, how to really uh, generate some additional capital if you've, you've done that first step, you built the website. Second step, got some traffic. Third step, built a little bit of a relationship with the people who came to the website. And then um, we'll talk about some of the monetization tactics, aside from parking, obviously. So, um, the, oh, and the final thing is, um, if, you, if you do want a copy of the slides, um, we'll make them available. So if you just want to give me a card at the end, we'll, we'll email you a link to that as well. So take lots of notes, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a whole bunch of ideas for you but uh, you definitely can get the slides afterwards. So really quickly, my background, um, I worked for Coca-Cola and McDonald's, and um, <laughs> I didn't have the opportunity that Bob had uh, to, to run my own Super Bowl commercial, but I did have uh, an opportunity to run some Super Bowl commercials. Um, and then I got into the internet really early in 94 and 95, uh, working for Sprint, and managed a big group of marketing folks, and really figuring out how to get our clients online. And then I moved to Florida to work at a company called ediets.com. And we took eDiets from about $2 million in revenue to $50 million in revenue. The interesting thing about eDiets, it was a pure play online. No physical products at all. Like everything you bought, you bought online. Uh, and then I was asked to speak at the Direct Marketing Association. I wrote a presentation called The 10 Golden Rules of Online Marketing, which has subsequently become a book. And uh, after the presentation, five or six people came up to me and said they wanted to hire me as a consultant. And I said, OK, buy me lunch. I consult. <laughs> and they said, no, 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 we're serious. We really want to hire you. So I started my business seven years ago, and it's called 10 Golden Rules. And we help companies figure out this internet stuff. We've had some really fortunate media, the Wall Street Journal. And I used up about four minutes of my 15 minutes of fame on Fox TV. So without further ado, let's uh, talk about how you can take those great ideas, those domains that you've been hanging on to for a couple of years, and how can we easily get started and build out a winning website. Um, been a lot of discussion over the last couple of days about demand media. And demand media just did an IPO and uh, generated over $174 million. And they have a really simple business model, and I call it the editor model. And essentially, uh, it's really, really easy to execute this model. And you just hire an editor and get a whole bunch of people to generate content, to, develop, to generate articles uh, for your websites. So um, demand media is paying freelancers between $10 and $20 to create articles and videos. And there's a number of really great websites where you can access these uh, freelancers who will build the content for you. And all you have to sort of do is act as an editor. Mashable has over $100 million valuation. Uh, here's uh, one of their blog posts about the .co domains. And, and Mashable just uses the editor model. You know, Pete doesn't write uh, nearly uh, very many of the articles anymore. 
Huffington Post is actually able to sort of move the political discussion. Um, and my friend Gail writes for them, and she, she doesn't get paid anything, but for her it's a tremendous opportunity to popularize her, her websites and make her own brand more valuable. So she provides free content to HuffPost. So where do you find these, these great editors? Uh, there's a, a site we use all the time called guru.com, G-U-R-U.com, or elance.com. And the great thing about these sites is they actually rate um, the, the freelancers, they rate all the writers, the web designers, um, all the different people you would need. And, and we as the users of these sites, we rate the uh, people who are uh, doing these sites. Um, Amazon uh, bought a company called Mechanical Turk. I mean, this, this site's unbelievable. I wanted um, 100 screenshots of uh, one of my websites, and I paid like $10, and I had it in like 15 minutes from Mechanical Turk. And people all around the world, you know, $10 is a lot of money for them to do a simple repetitive task. And this is a relatively new site called Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R. -R. And uh, these guys will install your WordPress site for five bucks. Uh, we'll help you with SEO for five bucks. We'll explain the difference between Android and iPhone for five bucks. But it's amazing how many articles and different content you could get created for five bucks. And of course, um, using your local college. You know, the journalism students are just looking to be published, and they'd love to be published on your website. So there's a number of great ways you can use the editor model and get content created for your website. The next category I'll call community, or user-generated content. So what a more powerful tool than actually getting the users of your website, the people who come to your website, to create all the content for you. And you need lots of content, of course. It makes your site interesting. And all importantly for Google, you've got to always update your content. And that's how your website uh, becomes important in the eyes of Google. So DN Forum, a uh, number of forums, great example, where the users are actually creating this very vibrant content and updating the topics that are most important. And then those, the newest topics, the newest things that people are talking about are the things that people are going to be searching for in Google. We created a networking site called Internet Marketing Club org it's a dot org and um, we just use the ning platform so you can use ning completely for free i think we pay like five dollars a month just so that we can point the domain um, point the ning site at our own domain internet marketing club dot org and we pay 20 bucks a month to take their ads off but we've had 1100 people from all around the world now join internet marketing club dot org and start networking and participating and creating forums and videos and chats and questions. Um, amazingly powerful platform. And we're building out a new version of the site using a combination of WordPress and vBulletin. And WordPress is amazing. It's this free blogging platform and it has all these plugins that you can uh, create all the community functions and, and all kinds of functions and um, the, the basic platform is free. The, the, the third uh, simple way to get started is just creating a blog site. And this is my own uh, personal domain. I bought jberkowitz.com several years ago, and I didn't have anything up there. And I just wanted to get some basic content up there so that I could start getting some importance in, in Google and the search engines in case I want to use this site one day. So I do little you know, updates now and again. But the amazing thing, like if you haven't ever actually created your own website, you should just create your own blog and just, you know, get, just get started. Just dip your toe in the water a little bit. It's really, really simple. You set it up at wordpress.org or wordpress.com. It's free, but I recommend wordpress.org because it's a little better from a search engine perspective. You can point your site at your own domain. So you're going to set up a blog. It's going to look like a website, and you're going to point it at one of your domain names. And blogging, for those of you who aren't technical, like it's really, really easy. It's as easy as email once you get it set up. And you could use one of the guys from Fiverr to set it up. Um, so you know, I go in. I, I click on New Post. I, I said here, um, building winning websites in 10 easy steps. And you just copy, I just literally copied and pasted some of the content from the presentation today into my blog. Um, I clicked this link button and I added a link to DomainFest. And so it's going to link to this show website because I'm obviously blogging about speaking at this event here. I went on Flickr and if you click on the, um, if you find rights, open rights photo photographs, you can use them so long as you give attribution to the uh, photographer. And I found a beautiful picture of the uh, tree here at the hotel. Um, and I uh, just click add an image and you just upload, save the image, upload the image. Again, it's as easy as doing an, e an email. Um, and then I just press publish. And there it is. You got your own website, you're updating it on a regular basis, um, and you've started uh, towards making some money. So, let me just do one little simple website setup and give you some of the core basics of you know, what a website needs. Like, 
there's really only five or six things that every website should have. You know, very, very basic. So here's a, here's a, a parked site, just as an example. Um, I just found this on the internet. It's called makemoneyonline.com. And it's just, you know, I'm, they're using one of the different parking tools. And we're just gonna take this site and sort of remake it as a, a, a new website that we could own. So, you know, we could just go to wordpress.org, set up our own site, point the blog over at uh, makemoneyonline.com. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna keep some of that parking revenue. So we're gonna um, move the feed over there or maybe just set up um, an AdSense feed and move it over there. Um, and and the, um, the logo, the logo should be in the top left-hand position. And that's standard for all websites. It's become a web convention. And we look for that on websites. And you probably all know now that if you're lost on a website, if you click the logo in that top left position, it takes you back to the home page. So that's just one of the conventions that we're all used to. We want to have a slogan. The slogan is part of what I call the four second rule. Everybody decides within four seconds when they come to a website if the website has what it is they're looking for. So one of the clues is the logo and the slogan. So we wrote a simple slogan, free tips and tools to generate revenue from a website. We need copy. So copy, content, is the heart of search engine optimization. Google reads words, and when people search those words, and Google's found them on your website, you've got to have lots and lots of words on your website. So in this case, I just grabbed an article from an article site and, and added it to the site. Your navigation should run across the top of the website or on the left-hand side. So keep it really, really simple. People are looking for that navigation to be either on the top or the left. Again, it's become a standard. We all want our websites to look different from everything else out there, but it really causes problems for people to figure out how to use it. So in, in conclusion of the first section, we, I gave you three ideas for just building some simple websites. You can use the editor approach where you just go to sites like Fiverr and Guru and Elance.com. You could hire an editor on one of those sites and get that person to source these articles for five and $10 from all around the world to add content on the subject area that you're talking about. And adding that content is gonna make your site relevant to users and make it more popular for the search engines. Second way is to create a blog. Simple wordpress.org site pointed at your domain name. It's really, really easy and it just takes like five minutes to write a blog post and you can become a web publisher. So there's no technical hurdles. And finally, creating a community. If you create a community site using Ning or WordPress, one of the functions that we use for Internet Marketing Club, the community is actually gonna create all the content on your website they're going to keep it current, they're going to update it for you, and it's one of the most powerful business models there is today because you don't actually have to pay anyone to be updating your website. The community is going to do it if you get the community engaged and involved in your site. And some of the basic site build things you want, the logo top left, you want a slogan to tell people exactly who you are and what you do, you want the navigation across the top or the left hand side, and then you want to start adding content to your site on a regular basis. So we've built, done the first thing, we got our basic website up. And now we've got to get some traffic to our website. So uh, we, we often talk about a funnel. So the funnel of traffic and the funnel um, analogy is used by web developers because we kind of funnel people in from a bunch of different sources. And then when they come into the funnel, we want to sort of arrange where they go on the website. We'll talk about that in a minute. But we built our basic website and we want some traffic to the site. So let's look at a number of basic tools and some more advanced strategies to get some traffic to your website. So the first and most obvious is obviously Google pay-per-click. I mean, there's 100 million searches conducted now every month. Sorry, 100 billion searches conducted every month. People are looking for your products and services. So you've got that pet project, you've got that domain, you've got your basic website up. You go to Google and, and you set up your basic pay-per-click campaign. Again, this takes about 15 minutes. You need a credit card. Make sure you set your daily budget at like five bucks a day. And, and then you can start testing some ads. It's really easy to set up these campaigns. You, you pick your keyword phrases. Um, you, you write your little ad, like the little ad here in the top portion. But the most important thing, I'm sure most of you know the basics of Google pay-per-click. The most important thing is that you're measuring conversions. It's not about how many people click to your site. The most important thing is what they do when they get there. And so you can set up a conversion action. You can set up different things that people do on your website and very easily measure if the different keyword phrases and the different ads are having success in getting people to do what you want once you get them into the funnel. So um, my friends, the guys from worldscutest.com are here today. 
And so if you go to worldscutest.com and you click the get started button in the bottom right hand corner and you go through and you enter one of your children in, in one of their contests, the most important thing is that we want to add some code that we get from Google, confirmation code, to find out how many people clicked on the ads actually did what we wanted them to do on the website. So then we can get the feedback on which keyword phrases are getting us customers and which keyword phrases are just costing us money. So the most important thing of Google pay-per-click or any pay-per-click is that you're measuring conversions. You're measuring the actions people are taking on your website and you're making decisions on your campaign. Do I want to bid more on this keyword phrase or do I want to get rid of this phrase based on whether people are taking an action on that phrase. The next piece of the puzzle and, and maybe even a more important piece is search engine optimization or SEO. And this is the area below the paid clicks and it's the free traffic. So this is where Google says, hey, so I search for by internet domain and these are the websites that, that Google said are the most important, the most relevant for that phrase based on the content on the website and how important those websites are. So let me just give you the basics or the ABCs of SEO. The first uh, A is architecture. So your website has to have a simple, clean architecture. As a matter of fact, if you, if you use WordPress, Google and the search engines love WordPress. It's nice, clean code, very, very easy for the search engines to read. And if you're having trouble with your website, if your website isn't getting picked up a lot in Google, you might want to have your code looked at and make sure it's just nice, simple code. Because if you've got all kinds of Flash and Java and all kinds of things on top of the words on your website, it's very, very hard for Google and the search engines to read through that. So you want nice, clean code. Um, internal links are very, very important. So if you see the links on this site, um, Charlotte was just showing me this site yesterday. Thank you, Charlotte. Um, there's just nice clean links on there. The internal links you see down below says DUI attorney, a group of DUI lawyers. So they're using the copy as a link. They're using the actual keyword phrase they want to rank for. So the internal links on a site are very, very important as well as the outside links from other sites linking to the site. And finally, you want to make sure you have a site map have a site map on every page on your site that links to a page which is a map of your site and links to all the other pages on your site so it makes it nice and easy for Google and the other search engines when they come to your site they're going to follow the link to the site map they're going to follow the site map to all the links to all the other pages on your site essentially what you're trying to do is make it easy for the spiders these automated spiders to read all the content on your site index it or read it into their search engines and get it on the website so the ABCs of search of SEO, number two is backlinks. You need lots of other sites linking to your site to make your site more important. Now, Ron's done an amazing job with DN Journal, and we all love, I'm sure everybody knows this site. And, you know, DN Journal has been working very, very hard to provide amazing content about the domain industry for a number of years. But what makes this site such a monster in the search engines that you know, when you search like all kinds of domain stories, you always find DN Journal, is that lots of other sites link to this site, making the site more important in the eyes of Google. So the whole thing about backlinks is to get other sites to link to your site to make your site more important. So this uh, tool is called SEO Quake, and it just sits on the top of my browser, Q-U-A-K-E, SEO Quake, and it tells me some of the important ratings about a website. So Google's ranking this site as a 5 out of 10, which is very, very important on their scale. And it tells me there's 60,000 other sites linking to the site. So how do you get other sites to link to your site? Well, the first thing is you need great content. Because if somebody is a blogger or a reporter and they find a really good article on your site that, that explains one of the points they're trying to make, they're going to link to your site uh, and say, hey, there's a great article over here at DN Journal. But one of the great advanced tactics is creating lists. And there's a term in the industry called link bait. And link bait is like the bait you'd put on a fish hook to bait the fish to bite the hook. But if you create a list of like the top 10 bloggers or the top 10 websites or the top 50 domain sites, a bunch of people on that list are going to link to the list and say, hey, we were put on the list of the top 10 websites or the top you know, domain sales of 2011. And I can't tell you the number of times I've linked to DN Journal to, to sort of tell people about this, these great lists that Ron um, has built for us. So the A is the architecture, the B is the backlinks, and the C is the content or copy. So the words on the, on the site, you've got to get the words that people are searching for 
in the copy, in the actual articles and press releases and, and pages of description on your website. So we use a number of tools. Uh, we use the Google Keyword Tool, Word Tracker or Keyword Discovery. Uh, Word Tracker and Keyword Discovery both have free products as well as they have subscription products. And so we research how many times these phrases are searched in Google, Yahoo, or uh, the Bing search engine. So in this case, I'm writing a page of copy for my website, and I find the phrase Internet Advertising Trends is searched 27 times a day on Google, seven times a day on Yahoo, and five times a day on Bing. Um, leadership keynote speakers and search engine marketing services expert. And I add those keyword phrases to an article on my website. And you want to try and use the phrases near the top, the middle, and the bottom of the page. So you're telling Google this page is all about this phrase. So essentially what you're doing in search engine optimization is you're optimizing your site for, for a keyword phrase one at a time. And if you target three phrases on every page on your site and you have a 50 page site, you just targeted 150 phrases and you said to Google, hey, I've got a page that's all about this phrase, like it's three or four times on the page. And in addition to being on the page, it's also the name of the page in the title uh, of the page, the title tag, which is like the headline of the page, the H1 uh, header tag, the description, and the alt tag, which is the description of the image. You know, when you hold your mouse over a picture, the, the, the words come up for people who are um, visually, uh, hearing and visually impaired so that the reader can read it out to them. But the alt tag is also read by Google. So Google can't read pictures but it can read the alt tag or the name of the image. So you want to get the keyword phrase in there. Here's a really good tool to find out how you're doing in the search engines. It's called SEMrush, and you just put in your domain name, and I found out this website has 258 phrases that are found by Google in the first two pages. So if you search uh, these phrases, uh, SEMrush, really good tool to tell you how you're doing. So the first uh, strip on the left-hand side is search engine marketing, pay-per-click and SEO. The next category is affiliate marketing. Now, we all think of affiliate marketing as a way to, to make money on our websites. But in this instance, I'm talking about using the affiliates to create a virtual sales force to drive traffic to your site. Remember, this is all about that funnel of driving traffic to our website. So in this case, my friend Sean Collins is acting as an affiliate for Amazon. And he's promoting a book. And if you hold your mouse over the book, you see there's actually the affiliate code at the bottom. So he's signed up as an Amazon affiliate. So you can get this virtual sales force of folks who will promote your products and services. And you know, you gotta think about this from the other side of the affiliate business. So you go to the affiliate sites like Share a Sale, Commission Junction, CJ.com, LinkShare, and the Google Affiliate Network, and you sign up as a merchant. You sign up and offer your program to affiliates and offer to pay $10 for every lead or $50 or 10% of every sale. And Amazon has millions of affiliates who promote their books and products and services, and the affiliates are like a virtual sales force, a commission sales force, who will drive traffic to your website. The next category are banners and email, and through the Google AdSense network, we all think of that as a way to make money, but you can also think of it as a way to send traffic to your website. And email marketing, Groupon, has a $15 billion valuation, the, the fastest company ever to a billion dollar valuation. In just seven months, they had a $1 billion valuation. And they're using email marketing to remind you about the great local deals they have um, every single day. And the final uh, category we have here is social media. And of course, uh, the, the most important player, uh, a new player in the game, is Facebook. And, and Facebook is just in the last year or so really coming around to where we can do things on Facebook to actually drive business to our website. So the Facebook fan pages are actual business pages and they become almost like a virtual web page. And we're starting to see a lot of advertisers, um, you probably see it in the Super Bowl a lot, you know, facebook.com slash GoDaddy. And a lot of people are, are sending people to Facebook instead of sending them to their website. So this is uh, Guy Kawasaki's new book page. And you see it really almost looks like a web page by use, building these tabs across the top using FBML, the Facebook markup language you can actually make a Facebook site look really customized and really unique. And the most important opportunity from a traffic perspective is the Facebook pages actually get picked up in Google and indexed in Google. 
So these are fan pages, not your personal profile. This is like a business profile as a fan page in Facebook. Now for a lot of you, you might think, you know, this is too much work. I'm not going to go build a website. And you might not do any of this stuff. But if you do one thing, if, if I can give you one valuable tip, make sure you create a Facebook page and get your domain names, your most popular, valuable do domain names. Get your Facebook domain. Like for our client, Dolphin Encounters, we got facebook.com slash dolphin encounters. And I think this is really, really significant for the domaining community. You, you must lock down your Facebook URL, your Facebook domain, your Twitter URL, even you know, your blogger URL, your WordPress URL, because I think in one to two years, the domain purchasing is not, we're not just going to buy a domain. If you also have the Facebook page and you also have the Twitter page and you sell that as a package, I think there's going to be a hell of a lot of value in that. And I think if you don't lock it down today, there's, it's like buying a domain. There's only one chance to get facebook.com slash dolphin encounters. I, I urge you to protect your most important domains today. There's a new kind of Facebook marketing that's really just started working in the last three to six months. And it's Facebook advertising. You know those little ads that come up on the side of your Facebook campaign? Well, the reason it's just started working is I think because Facebook has, has made the program more robust and, and they've, you know, we've done a lot of testing and we've found a couple little tactics. And when I say it's working, for about eight out of 10 of our clients, Facebook is actually working better than Google pay-per-click, meaning that there's a lower cost per lead or a lower cost per acquisition. And there's a couple tricks you need to make this work. So the beauty of Facebook advertising, it's really, really easy to set it up. It's just like setting up a Google campaign. And the beauty of it is you can target very precisely by demographics and also by psychographics. So I went to the 500 million Facebook fans or the Facebook profiles, and I was very precise. I wanted to do a little Facebook advertising campaign for a presentation I was doing at another conference. And it was an affiliate marketing conference. So I wanted people who said they liked things like affiliate marketers, affiliate summit was the name of the conference, affiliate rockstar. So people who had clicked on a fan page and said they like something to do with affiliate marketing. I also targeted people between the ages of 29 and 49, um, men and women, and only in the United States. So I went from 500 million people to 5,780 people. And that's the beauty of Facebook. Only a very precise targeted audience was going to see my ads. I created a bunch of different ads. The most important thing in your Facebook ads is actually the graphic. If you look at these are actually identical headlines and copy, but the ad on the left did twice as good as the ad in the middle. And it was, you know, the image is almost identical, but you really got to test lots of images. And uh, Jeremy Shoemaker will tell you that the more cleavage, the better your ad will perform. Maybe that's the GoDaddy uh, theory of marketing. So pr the pr prettier, pretty girls work really mu much better than my ugly mug uh, in Facebook. The, the results come out just like Google pay-per-click, but there's one really critical thing missing. Do, does anyone remember back to the Google pay-per-click? I said there's one really important thing that you need to do. Conversion, conversion tracking, right? Now, Google, uh, Facebook's just testing some conversion tracking. But what you can do is we add Google Analytics URL builder. So it's a, it's a function in Google Analytics, which you should all have on your website. It's their free analytics tool. We add the URL builder. And for each ad, we create a destination URL, a campaign source. And we can actually track the ad performance at the ad level as a conversion metric on our website. So that's a little bit more work. It's more for the advanced approach. But it's really, really critical. And that's what's been able to take the campaigns from not working to working because we're able to measure conversions. As I said off the top, you shouldn't be doing pay-per-click if you're not measuring conversions. Now, the, the next and very powerful social media I want to talk about is YouTube. And, and when I spoke at this conference in Fort Lauderdale, I played the Blendtec ad. And it's a lot of fun. If you haven't seen that, where they, they actually put an iPad in their powerful blender and they blend it into a fine metallic dust. But I won't take the time to do that today. But the, the moral of the story is, you know, this is really a product demonstration. These guys take an iPad and they break it in half and they put it in a blender and they show how well their blender works. And it's so funny that it's spread virally. A hundred million people have seen these videos. Um, this one has been viewed by six million people. 
But I want to tell you a story of a friend of mine who was working in construction, and he was a general contractor, and he was fairly good at it. He was very successful, but one day he, he had an epiphany. He was working on a construction site, and he looked at a guy, an older guy, and the guy could barely get up the ladder, and he was doing some, some work on a roof. And he, he said to himself, he said, you know, what's, the, what's my future? You know, how much longer can I be working on these sites? And you know, how long is my body going to allow me to work on these, this physical job? So he, he got a little bit of a breakthrough, and he, he, he came up with this concept of writing articles to help promote his business. And he, he was able to get really popular with his local paper and, and become a syndicated journalist called Ask the Builder. His name's Tim Carter. Has anyone seen Tim's stuff? And he's recently had a massive breakthrough. Well, not recently, over about the, the last five years. He started creating how-to videos in a number of different categories. And think about YouTube for a minute. YouTube is the number three website in the world. It's number three behind Google and Facebook for traffic, according to Alexa. The other th amazing thing about YouTube, it's the number two search engine in the world. More people search for things on YouTube than Bing and Yahoo. So Google's number one, but the number two place that people enter a search phrase is in that search box on YouTube. But what Tim's done is he's gone a step further. He's search engine optimized his videos. He's put the name of a phrase in the title of the video and the body of the video, and he's made his YouTube channel very popular so that when he adds a new video, it comes up in the YouTube search engine. And when you come up in the YouTube search engine, Google owns YouTube, and look what happens. So say you wanted to install a three-way switch, and I, I wouldn't even begin to start installing a three-way switch, but Tim created a video called Three-Way Switch. And 462,000 people have watched this instructional video. And then Tim's very active participating with the community, answering their questions when they watch these videos. And this drives a ton of traffic to his site, a ton of subscriptions, and he's got um, you know, a six or seven figure, very, very successful business. Um, and he's not climbing up ladders anymore. He's an internet guru, and he's one of the top AdSense guys in the world. Another friend of mine was a very young uh, tennis pro in Washington, D.C. And he realized very quickly that he, he couldn't make much of a living as a tennis pro. I mean, if you're really good, these guys make fifty or $60,000. So he started putting training videos on YouTube and putting the videos on his site. And he, he couldn't figure out a way to, to make, make money and monetize the videos. But the videos are phenomenal. I've, I've recently taken up tennis, and I'm, I'm doing as much as I can to learn from these videos. And here, this video on Roger Federer's grip has been viewed 824,000 times. And what um, Will, Will Hamilton is his name, what Will's figured out is he, he gets people to his website at the end of the video. He says, come get a free uh, training course. And he's built this amazing list of tennis professionals. And he'll probably do seven figures in selling training courses off his website, which has a great name called Fuzzy Yellow Balls. FuzzyYellowBalls.com for the tennis folks in the crowd. Dell Outlet this has done uh, probably about $10 million in selling refurbished Dell products uh, through Twitter. The only place they promote their refurbs is through Dell Outlet and their blog. My friend um, JB Glossinger created a podcast called Morning Coach. If you need a little pick-me-up in the morning, you guys are obviously the morning crowd. Um, he records a powerful podcast every single morning with motivational tips and financial tips and personal tips. And he figured out a way to monetize it. He became the number one self-help podcast on iTunes. 25% of people listen to podcasts. But go check out your category in iTunes. I bet you only have about 30 competitors. Think about that. What an amazing opportunity. 25% of people listen to podcasts, but you only have 30 competitors. How many competitors do you have for your website? A million? 10 million? So JB became number one in self-help. And he started offering his Monday podcast for free and the rest of the weekly podcast is a part of a subscription model. Uh, he's well on his way to building a seven-figure business as well. Um, and he just had a webinar that was uh, a six-figure, uh, a live seminar, a six-figure event. So driving traffic to your website. Number one, we're going to use search, pay-per-click, and SEO. We're going to search engine optimize our website by building great content that's going to build a lot of links to our website. Um, the ABCs of search, the architecture, the backlinks, and the, and the copy or the content. We're going to use things like affiliate marketing to create a virtual sales force to our site. And some really cool social media stuff like Facebook fan pages, Facebook ads, and YouTube videos. Okay, so now we've got them to our website. We want to create a relationship. 
that all-important virtual handshake. Less than 1% of people who come to a website will actually fill out a contact us form across the web. But if you can get 5% or 10% to opt in for something on your website, you've built that first step in that virtual handshake, that digital relationship, where you've built sort of an ethical trust thing where you say, uh, if we, you went to the moniker auction, and Michelle wanted me to, to remind you guys about the auctions tonight and tomorrow night. If you go to the, the um, moniker auction site, there's an auction alert email sign up. So you wouldn't miss any critical auction updates if you signed in. So they're, they're creating that virtual handshake. They're saying, hey, if you give me your email and you trust me, I'm only going to email you when we have a moniker auction update. On eDiets, we had a free diet profile. On Jim Cramer's site, we actually let you try the product completely free for 30 days. It's something I call a UVP, a unique value proposition, where you offer people something free on your website in exchange for their information. So let's go back to our test site, makemoneyonline.com. We revamped this site. We still left some of the revenue stuff in there, some, some banners and some AdSense ads, but we put in a UVP, a unique value proposition. We said, get a free internet profit guide. Seven steps to you know, generating traffic, social media for profit, retention and resales. And we asked for three pieces of information, first name, last name, and email. First name so we can address the email, hey Jay, here's our weekly, weekly email. And um, click for free guide. So something free on the website to start building that all important list. I'm sure many of us read Owen Frager's really great Frager Factor newsletters. The really important thing is staying top of mind. And when I think of domain writers, I always think of Owen because at some point I signed up for his newsletter. But there's a magic in communicating with people. And a lot of marketers fail because they give up before they get to eight communications. If you're lucky enough to get people to your website one time, you don't want to rely on that 1% where they fill out the contact us form or, or less than 1% where they buy something. Give them something free and ask them to opt in and then send them valuable information in your newsletter. But there's a magic to communicating with people because the first time we go to a website, we're just doing research. But if you send them valuable information, valuable articles, you stay top of mind because their purchase decision when they're, when they're doing the research might be one month or six months or, or even a year away. So if you become the brand that they think of because you send them valuable information about your category, it, it, the, the, the statistics say that it takes an average of eight times to communicate with people until they come back to your website. So don't give up. Don't give up with just a website. Give, don't, you know, give them an offer, build a database, build a list, and communicate with them on an ongoing basis. And it's not just email anymore. Um, many of you probably know Chef Patrick, and you know, he told me he can't cook at all, but a great domain blog. And you see the RSS feed. So a lot of people are signing up to get blog information either on their phone, I, I signed up for a Google Reader so I can quickly read the blogs in our industry as I'm sitting, you know, waiting in line at the bank. Or I also configured my Google with iGoogle so that I get all the top blogs that I want to see on my browser when I open Google. So a lot of us are configuring our feeds, we're self-determining what news we want to see. Another powerful tool is the like button in Facebook. Did you realize that you can take the like button off of Facebook? So there's a little widget you can put on your website. One of the women on our team um, clicked on this link for the boyfriend skinny to die for jeans to say that she really liked these jeans that she saw on Levi's website. And when she does that, she's actually popularizing the fact that she likes these um, boyfriend skinny to die for jeans. And everyone in her Facebook audience is going to see that. So another powerful way to extend um, that relationship. So number one, you want to create a UVP, unique value proposition, something free on your website that's going to create that digital virtual handshake with folks. Then you want to honor that digital relationship, that virtual trust that you've created by sending really great newsletters and, and RSS feeds and follow the magic of eight. You've got to connect with people about an average of eight times before they'll come back to your website. And you know, as Bob Parsons said so well yesterday, don't give up. You know, don't give up when your website automatically doesn't get a lot of traffic. You know, you gotta bring these people to your website. And don't give up when they come to your website, give them something valuable to sign up for. And then don't give up after you send them one email, you gotta send them an ongoing valuable communications to get them back to your website. 
So let's talk about some ideas once we got them there, once we built that relationship to really make some money from that website, once we, once we get it going and once we build our database. So Groupon, I mentioned earlier, $15 billion valuation. And I think one of the magics of this category is, is not that they're couponing. I mean, people have been couponing for years. It's this deal of the day concept. Because when you get permission from, from um, when Groupon gets your permission to send you an email or an RSS feed, or you follow them on Twitter, they're sending you a deal every single day. And there's a little bit of magic in that. So think about how in your business, you could have a deal of the day or an offer of the day or an offer of the week. On Elliot's blog, he has a deal of the week and it's right there on the top of his website. And he does a really good job sort of calling attention to it in the domain community. So how could you do that in your business? Contests are really good. We ran a contest uh, where I actually bought a gold bar and we gave it away to consistent with our 10 Golden Rules brand. And we had it on our website and our banners and even on our Facebook page. And we created a little YouTube video for it. And we built our list by, by offering a chance to win a gold bar. Um, of course, AdSense is, is the most straightforward way to monetize your website. Uh, Google is going to read the words on your page. And we as advertisers can um, select that we want to advertise on any pages that have those words. And the, the content network is the fastest way to get some ads that are relevant on your website. They're going to generate a little bit of money. We talked about affiliate marketing earlier to drive traffic to your website, but obviously adding affiliate banners. This is on our, our diabetes client. We put the eDiets affiliate banner ad. And so if anybody signs up for the eDiets plan, the, uh, the, the, the uh, diabetes company is going to get paid a finder's fee, an affiliate commission. Uh, paper post uh, from the Isaiah Co Corporation. So you can actually um, do posts. You must disclose according to the new FTC regulations that you're, you're an affiliate, you have an affiliate relationship. And Isaiah even offers sponsored tweets. And th there's one category that is the most exciting to me. And this is where I've been spending a lot of time over the last six months. And I want to tell you the story of my friend Jeff Walker. And many of you probably know of Jeff Walker. And he was a, a house uh, husband. He, his wife had a job. And he, he didn't really fit into corporate America. And he'd had a couple jobs. It just didn't work out. So he was doing some stuff from home. He was a day trader. And you know he had, didn't have a, uh, any financial success. But um, he, he was pretty good at picking stocks. But he didn't have a, a lot of money to invest. So he came up with this idea of doing an, a newsletter. And everybody always said, hey, you know, Jeff, you're sitting at home all day watching the stock market. Can you tell us you know, what's happening? And so he had this free newsletter to just a few of his friends. I think he had you know, 17 people or 27 people, very small list, that he would send out this email list. And so as, as time went on, he'd been home for like six years. And his wife, for whatever was happening in their life, um, they decided that Jeff was going to go out and find a job. And she was, she was going to um, come back into the house. And he, he went and interviewed. But you know, he didn't fit in cor corporate America before. But when he went out to try and find a job after being a house husband for six years, people really didn't understand. So he, he couldn't get a job right away. So he decided to go back to school. And he was sitting there in school. And just that week, he had launched his first information product. And what he did is he took his, his e-newsletter with his daily day trading tips. And he, he said to people, if you want to subscribe to this, I'm going to charge a small fee to get my um, daily stock tips. And in his first launch, the first info product launch he ever did, he generated $1,300. And he was sitting there in school, and he realized you know, he, what, this school wasn't for him. What he's going to do is work on this full time and professionally. And so his second launch, he offered a different product, like a, a little ebook or something, and he made 6,000. And his next one, he made 8,000. And then his next launch, he did $34,000. And then he did a launch that did $106,000 and became known as Six Figures in Seven Days. And Jeff actually offers a product called the Product Launch Formula. And he teaches all of us in a number of different categories how to do these launches. I mentioned my friend Will Hamilton earlier. And Will is studying these product launches, and that's how he's making money off of his tennis business. There's another uh, guy in, in Jeff's group who sells herbal remedies. You know, you can pick herbs and mushrooms from, from your backyard to, to fix uh, different medical problems. And he, he's made like six figures on doing these product launches. So everyone in the room knows more than 95% of the world of, about something. Uh, Victor and I were talking about this yesterday. 
you know, he could create a really great domain product in, in one of the niches. And so what you, you do is you build your list, and the, the, the newest thing is these guys are doing videos. You watch the free videos, and you sign up, you give them your email address to see these videos, and then they have a course. So this is actually a six-module course that I studied and I personally went through to learn about product launch marketing. So that's one of the newest and, and, and I think hottest categories is selling your knowledge, selling your own personal expertise. So let's sum up building winning websites. There's three really easy ways to get started. You can start with a blog site, an editor site, or a community site, like I did with my Ning site. Then you want to drive traffic to your site with search marketing, affiliate, and social. When they come to the site, you want to create a relationship with a UVP, a unique value proposition, something free you offer in exchange for their email address and their trust. And then you honor that trust by sending valuable information out. And you also want to feed it out because today many of us won't sign up, like I get too much email, I don't like signing up for your newsletters, but I'll sign up for your feed and I'll get your feed on my, on my cell phone. And finally, monetize your websites through things like AdSense, affiliates, social subscriptions, and uh, info product marketing. So, you, you, I gave you probably about 50 different ideas and, and hopefully you're taking notes. But one of the tips I like to share with you that I've learned is I go, I go to a lot of these conferences and I take like eight pages of notes and I got all these great ideas and I got you know, things circled and starred and highlighted. And then you get back to the office and you got about 200 emails that you, you, you skimmed while you were here and you didn't do anything with. And you got a project that's waiting. And then the next year when you come back to Domain Fest, you're like, gee, where's those notes? I had some really great ideas last year. So one of the things I, I, like to, I learned to do, I discipline myself, is I go through my notes and I rank everything one to 10. I'm big on 10 lists. My company's called 10 Golden Rules. And I, I prioritize things. So what I urge you to do after the presentation today and after, you know, as you're flying home or when you're back in your office, prioritize the top 10 things you're gonna do. And do one thing immediately. Anthony Robbins says to take the first step towards the achievement of your goals. Get a little bit of momentum. So maybe it's, you know, going and making sure you lock down all of your domains in Facebook. You know, own facebook.com slash 10 golden rules for your most important domains. Or, or maybe it's setting up that blog and just getting started. But, you know, do me the favor and do yourself the favor of, you know, prioritizing the things you need to do. And just do one thing at a time. Don't think, hey, I got 50 things I got to do because you won't do any of them. Um, also, pay it forward. I'd love you to be my friend on LinkedIn or Twitter. My, my Twitter name is J, at Jay Berkowitz. Um, I do this, all, all, I speak somewhere almost every week. So if you're a member of any association, I'd like to talk to you about speaking opportunities. And um, of course, 10 Golden Rules, we, we can help you with your search and conversion and affiliate marketing, social media. And our new company is going to do website build outs at Revenue Evolution. Um, one last thing, if, if you would. Um, if, you wanna, if you want me to follow up with you, could you write FU on the back of your business card? That means follow up, <laughs> right? Um, and uh, with that, I'll be happy to take some questions. There's, uh, there's a prize for the, uh, asking the first question, because we just got to get this started. <laughs> Hey, so on your Facebook advertising, were you trying to drive traffic? Or were you trying to drive conversions or trying to drive sales? Did it work? Was it very expensive? Because you whittled 500 million people down to 5,000. Yeah. But did you drive them to your website and they bought something? Well, the, or, okay. or is it branding? Yeah. Are you just trying to brand? Well, it's both, depending on your, your objectives. Um, and what I said that I think is the most important is on average, eight out of 10 of our clients Facebook is working better than Google. And better is defined as a lower cost per acquisition. So if, if, people, if you're in business to business like I am, I'm just looking for a name. Like, hey, I'd like to talk to you about your marketing services. Or if you're selling costumes like our costume client, they're looking for a conversion. They're looking for a sale. But we could also measure how many people sign up for their costume newsletter. So based on the criteria, whether it's cost per lead, cost per sign up or cost per conversion, Facebook's working better than Google in eight out of 10 of our campaigns now. Now in the campaign that I showed you, I bought a gold bar and I did a presentation called Social Media Gold and it was just a little, you know, just a little hook that if you signed up, 
at the, at the presentation, we drew a name out of a hat and we gave away the gold bar. So what I was doing is building my list in that instance. So that was list building, really. All right, so, so when you click on a Facebook ad, does it take you to a Facebook it's a great, fan page? It's a great or question. Or does it take you to a, your website? Great question. <laughs> and, and the answer is you've got to test to find out. And it's really important that you test. But in, in, in about 60% of cases, we're having more success by going to a Facebook fan page that's a customized page. So you build a tab, like I built a tab called the Gold Contest. And we had a video there about giving away the gold bar and about my presentation. And I gave away some free information about how I create presentations and where I find the pictures and stuff like that. So test going to a custom Facebook fan page and also test going to a landing page on your site. More often than not, people are more comfortable to stay in the Facebook environment, but it's not like a 90% thing. It's only about a 60% thing, so you have to test. But it's a great question. Um, come, come see me after. I'll give you a copy of my book. I have a couple other prizes, too, if we got to uh, uh, Over here, uh, Enrico Thanks. Schaefer. Uh, the two big algorithmic changes last year by Google seem to uh, adjust the algorithm to de-emphasize the backlink, which, of course, became uh, ripe with abuse and to further emphasize quality websites, i.e. quality content. What are your insights as to what Google is looking for in terms of quality content, given that quality used to be determined primarily by the backlink? Is it now original content? Do you have an insight into that? Um, I, 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 I don't believe, personally, that Google has de-emphasized the backlink. And you're combining a couple things. So importance of a website is determined by the backlinks. Content is determined by the relevance and the quality of the content. And there's a number of components underneath each of those. So let's talk about them separately. The backlinks, um, what Google's continually doing is, like if I put up a blog site and I showed you guys, we could put up a blog site in five minutes. And I link to my website five minutes later, Google's saying, hey, that site's only been around for like five minutes. So they don't give it a lot of importance. But if you're in the domain business and Ron Jackson, DN Journal links to you, I mean, that site's got 60,000 other sites linking to it. It's an important site and it's a relevant site. So if you get a link from DN Journal, you are import it's important and it's relevant to, to your industry. Those links are still worth their weight in gold. They're, they're magical. And Google uses that to determine importance. On the content side, Google's looking at things like, you know, is your how long do people stay on your site? Do they go and read a lot of pages? You know, uh, is the content well written? Meaning, like, is is the copy like throughout the page? Is it important on the page? Are you internally linking from other pages to that page with that keyword phrase? As I showed you on the DUI lawyer, DUI attorney page, it's linking to an internal page about DUI attorney. So they're using a number of different criteria to evaluate the quality of the content on your website, and then how frequently it's updated. So you've got to keep your site fresh. You know, Matt Cutts at Google uses the term an apple a day. So the old expression, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. If you add a page of content to your site every day, Google's going to love it. And if you create a community site with thousands of people adding a page of content every day, you're golden. Yeah, great. And then in terms of original content, I've heard that they, uh, their algorithm has improved in terms of identifying original uh, grammatically correct, probably, content. Yeah. Do you have any insights on that? Absolutely. So, you know, one of the things a lot of people do is they go to article sites and they copy the articles and paste them on their website. And that's not a bad thing to do to supplement the original content. So, like, the demand media sites are just getting people to write 10 and $20 articles. So you maybe want to go for, like, the $30 articles that are so they're grammatically correct, or have an editor who's just going to quickly proof stuff. And having original, relevant, high-quality content that a lot of people will link to, and, and that's how they're also going to determine that the, the will they link to the internal page as well, is, is, is really what, you know, look, let's get back to what Google's originally designed to do. They're designed to, you know, they want to send people to the page that answers their query. Because Google has to, the search engine has to work, or you're not going to use Google. So they can't, make their, they can't make their algorithm tricked out or something. They've they got to try and make it as good as possible. So if we try and trick Google by you know, putting a bunch of fake blog links to the site, or if we put these $5 articles instead of the $30 articles on the site, 
Google's going to try and figure out which are the sites that have good original content and they're frequently updated and, 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 and they're, they're authority content that people are linking to it and which are the sites that are just these, you know, McContent sites. People joke about demand media, they call it like the McDonald's of McContent. So the good quality content is going to always rise to the top. How, how are we on time, Aaron? One or two more? So a follow-up on that is, what's your opinion on auto-generated content? For example, a WordPress plugin that's sort of an RSS feed that for, you'll have a new section yeah. and it's calling this, this data, whatever form, and it's a section. It's I think it's new. a good supplement. Okay. So you've got to have good original content and then you can supplement with a news feed. There's nothing wrong with a news feed. You, Google will actually give you a little bit of credit for that. But if all your site is is just a spinning site, spinning other content or, or you know, posting other content, it's not going to have that authorship and originality that Google's looking for. One other question. On the forum, you used vBulletin plus WordPress. Correct. I suspect you've evaluated a lot of products. Yeah. So we started with Ning, and it's a great place to get started. And then we want some additional functions and, and features. So we're going to a combo of WordPress and vBulletin. Last one. Hi, Jay. Yeah, Michael Lindsay, PremierDomains.com. Um, enjoyed your presentation. Thank you, Michael. Confir um, the confirmation page on analytics that you talked about, can you set that up as a, um, just a page or actually a button? So after they've filled out the form and they click a button, is, can, can that be the confirmation? Um, Google has a, a relatively new thing called actions. So if you watch a video or click a button, you can measure an action. Um, we haven't been able to get that to the point where we really feel it's reliable. So we, we prefer like a confirmation page, especially if you're getting an email login or, or actually a purchase. I mean, obviously a, on the purchase, if someone purchases the Halloween costume or the book or whatever, you, they come to a page, hey, thank you very much. We, we you know, got your credit card went through and you know, your book will be shipped and here's your tracking code. You know, that's a confirmation page. So that's the best way, the cleanest way. But you can uh, use actions in analytics uh, to accomplish the same thing. All right. Well, thank you all very much. I'll stick around.